What's up everyone, welcome back to Fisher Hex, and in this video I will be adding a second pH probe and a second temperature probe to the 125 gallon reef tank. Now these probes came from the Zeovis system which is unfortunately not running anymore. So I figured this would give me an opportunity to have uh, additional probes in the tank along with uh, showing you guys how to set them up, calibrating, etc, etc. Alright, so uh, I already connected the probes to the PM1 module and they are sitting in the water. So let's go ahead and get into Fusion and we will organize this a little bit. All right, so they're not here on the left-hand side, so we're going to come up here and pull them down. Uh, as you can see, it says Zeo Temp. That's one of them. So we're going to set this underneath the other temperature. And, of course, uh, Zeo pH. We're going to put it underneath the second one here as well. Let's move it real quick. All right, so as you can see, the names are not what I want them to be. They still say the Zeo system. So we're going to go ahead and change them accordingly. All right, so what you're going to do is come over to the original dashboard, log in there, come over to configuration, go on to probe and input. All right, so uh, if you go ahead and hit, here, hit this little scroll down here, you'll be able to see everything that's connected to the actual system itself, uh, switch-wise, probe-wise, all that good stuff. So just identify what you're actually looking for. So we already know we're looking for Zeo Temp and Zeo uh, pH. So we're going to go ahead and click on Zeo Temp real quick. This will give us the opportunity to see the status of the probe itself. It's enabled, the probe name, okay, and this is what it's calibrated for so far, but we're going to end up changing that here in the future. All right, now it's time to change the name of this probe so we can identify it in Fusion and also for programming purposes later on. All right, so uh, it's basically a second pro a second temp probe, so we're going to go ahead and um, we'll just go ahead and do uh, temp2. I tested a few names out. There were several, several that just wouldn't fit right, uh, so I finally came to the conclusion that I would just make it stupid simple. Uh, so temp2 is what we're going to put it at. Save that. All right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, as you can see, that's updated. We're going to go down to here to pH. And uh, same thing. We're just going to make it pH2. All right. It looks like it's saved correctly. Yep. Both are good to go. So let's go over and get over to Fusion and see how those went. Um, as you can see here, uh, temp2 has changed itself in uh, Fusion. And then uh, pH2. So we have pH and pH2. All right. So the next thing we got to do is get over to the sump and we will calibrate these accordingly. All right, guys. The first probe we're going to calibrate will be our temperature probe. This is really, really easy. Basically, what you want to do is get uh, the current tank temperature. Now, I recommend using at least two different sources to get that temperature. Uh, my first source that I use is a TDS meter that has a built-in temperature. It's in Celsius, but once we get that reading, we'll go in and uh, convert it over to Fahrenheit. Also, I use a secondary uh, external probe, not on the apex, to see what the temperature currently is. And you can also use your apex probe if you have one already on there to kind of see where it's sitting at. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and throw this in real quick. It's going to take about two to three minutes before it actually gives me the reading stops on the TDS meter. And then we'll come back over and um, make that adjustment in apex. All right, our current reading is 26.1 Celsius. All right, so let's go over and do the conversion on the computer. All right, just go ahead and go to Google, type in Celsius to Fahrenheit. You'll come up with this little calculator here. So we're just going to go ahead and put in uh, 26.1. That comes out to 78.9. The uh, apex itself says uh, 79. So that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty close, actually. So we're going to go ahead and put this into our calibration now. All right, now that we've got the proper tank temperature, we're going to go ahead and, and change that and update the Temp2 Pro. All right, so we're going to go over here and hit the center button. I'm going to scroll down to Setup. Center button again. Go down to Temp Setup. All right, uh, there's other things here. Just a brief overview of them, and I'll do a separate video on it. Uh, you can change Fahrenheit to, or Celsius. You can go ahead and change the name of the probes themselves and you can also enable and disable whatever probes you want. I know there are three on this system and I'm only currently obviously using two and so I disabled the other one. All right so uh, besides that we're going to go into calibrate hit the center button and then you select the probe that you want. We're doing probe two. Now you hit the up and down arrow to the change the value. Now it came out to 78.9. We're going to go up to 79 just because that seems uh, closer to the other probe that was just calibrated the other day. So we're going to do it at 79. Hit OK, which will save all changes. Hit the Home button. We're good to go. 
Uh, that um, actual probe is not on the home screen here. I probably will never put it on there. Same with the uh, pH2 probe. I'm just going to keep them in fusion. They're backup probes. They're just there uh, to be able to see what kind of readings. And just in case one of my other probes goes haywire for whatever reason. But um, other than that, guys, that's it for the uh, temperature. So let's move into the pH. All right. In order to calibrate your pH probe, you need to use calibration solution. Now, I use the Milwaukee from Bulk Resupply. I know it's like a couple bucks per. Um, it might have gone up. It's been a little while since I bought it. I kind of buy it in bulk just because I'm always using it. Um, but so you get the seven and the ten, and I'll show you guys how to use that here in a second. But one quick note: um, I recommend that you calibrate your pH probe at least every three to six months. Uh, sometimes I find that um, I've had to calibrate it every two months. It just depends, and I really don't know what affects that. Um, just be aware that uh, if air bubbles get in there, it will set off the reading as well. So first thing you want to do before calibrating is shake out the air bubbles. Uh, that makes a difference as well. Plus, uh, how old your pH probe will also determine how often you have to calibrate it. All right, so let's get into it. All right, the first one you want to calibrate is the seven buffer solution. Now, the best way to do this is just go ahead and cut it, the end off at an angle, just enough to get the probe through. All right, that works there. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get in, before we stick the probe in, we're gonna go ahead and get into uh, Apex here. Scroll down to Setup. Scroll down to pH Setup. We're gonna go ahead and go to Calibrate. We're gonna select the probe two, and then it says Low Solution. All right, we're gonna hit the middle button there. Now, you have numbers that are moving on there, right? So just go ahead and put the probe into the pack 7 here, and you'll start to see the numbers move. All right, set it at an angle just to make sure that it's in there good. Move it around a little bit just in case you got some air bubbles. All right, set it there. Now it says settling. Now we just got to wait for the numbers to stop moving. I like to wait. Once it stops moving, do 10 to 15 seconds later, jiggle it a little bit, see if it uh, stops moving again, see it moved a little bit more that time. All right, now we're just going to wait for it to stop moving. All right, so it's at 0772. The uh, numbers themselves really don't matter. Uh, you're just going to wait, so we're going to get 10 seconds. Five, four, okay, we start over, it stopped again. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, now we're gonna hit okay. All right, now it wants us to put in the 10 solution, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take this out right here, set it to the side. I like to put my, a little bit of water just to make sure it, uh, doesn't have any of the 10 calibration solution on it. I'm just going to go ahead and just rinse it off a little bit, make sure we get that calibration solution off. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I just choose to do it that way. All right, now we're going to do 10. Same thing, we're going to go ahead and cut the end. All right, go ahead and slide the probe in. Shake it around a little bit. Wait for the numbers to start moving. As you can see there, they're moving. All right, I'm gonna give it a few seconds. Wait for it to stop, shake it up a little bit. Alright, we're going to shake it up again. Ten, one, zero, six, one. All right, we're going to count down. Ten, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Looks good to go. Go ahead and save that.
hit OK. All right, updating. I'm going to take this out. Rinse it off real quick. All right. Now, what you can do is go ahead and go in here and test to see actually if uh, you can go ahead and put it back in the 7 and put it back in the 10 just to see where it's actually at. All right, guys, I went ahead and added the pH2 to the screen so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. We're going to test to see how it actually calibrated, all right? So by doing this, we're just going to put the probe in back in each one of these packages, rinse it off in between, and see where the numbers fall. It kind of tells you where it's uh, programmed at. So let's go ahead and do the 7 real quick. And throw it back in the 7 here. Good at an angle. Put it back down there. So let's see where it actually falls at. Closer to 7, the better. Shake it up a little bit. It's getting the seven. Oop, almost there. And also be aware that uh, even though you rinse it off in between, it could have traces of the 10 in here, which couldn't change it. But it looks like we went to seven, no problem. So we're gonna take that out. We're gonna rinse it real quick. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put it in the 10. Same thing, see where it ends up at. Shake it a little bit, any air bubbles. All right, it's moving up. Shake it a little bit more. definitely close enough that's for sure yeah 9.98 yeah I'm not gonna get any better than that really I mean you can you could get it at 10 but like I said you probably have some of the 7 in here too which is a messing with it itself but I'm totally fine with that that works out great all right so the probe is calibrated so I'm just gonna put it back in the tank all right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask. As always, guys, I appreciate you watching my videos. Go ahead and like, comment, and, of course, subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Later.